Um, hello, everyone. I am Pepa Srini Sharma from India, and I'm a part of Mission 89. Uh, today, I will be talking about the health facility. So the presentation will include the internal design, floors, research goals, including radiation, margin regolith, contamination, extremophiles, human body, uh, food and agriculture, including crops, meat, kitchen, the resources needed for a week, uh, space hospital and psychological health, sleep pods, <clears throat> technologies necessary for operation and installation, possible resources to generate in situ or transport it from the earth, management, roles, astronaut training program, guidelines to be provided to the other facilities, specific protocols for the facility, uh, protocols of safety for occupancy, for food and micro production, uh, for 3D printing, uh, technologies and outputs that could be applied to earth, guidelines to be applied to the daily life of Earth, uh, impacts to sustainable development goals and references. So starting with the internal design, the facility will have an eight meter diameter and three floors. So the first floor will be the research and analysis floor. Uh, we will have major, major research goals met here, uh, which will include radiation protection, regular research, uh, research on contamination and ways to uh, lessen contamination, uh, research on extremophiles and the human body. So some of the uh, research goals will be analyzing regolith composition for better innovations. Then we will have analyzing on-site available resources for healthcare, looking at the radiation and creating a better radiation protection system. We will be aiming to completely prevent any contamination. Uh, we will be observing and understanding the effects of Mars habitation on the human body to provide a better healthcare for the astronauts and coming up with strategies to enhance the well-being of the astronauts. Uh, so undoubtedly one of the major obstacles when it comes to settling on Mars is radiation. Uh, it increases the lifetime risk of cancer, uh, central nervous system effect, and you know it uh, results in degenerative diseases. Um, enough exposure would also cause radiation sickness. So one solution would be to come up with the material to keep the weight down while also protecting the astronauts from the ultraviolet radiation. <clears throat> Certain nanomaterials, they have shown promise. So isotopically enriched boron nanotubes, they make nanosensor integrated hulls that provide effective radiation shielding, as well as energy storage. Another method, which is a common method would be used to, uh, will be to use polyethylene and lithium hydride. Uh, we can also have vitamin C and A, which, which are antioxidants, which also help reduce the effects of radiation in the human body. Another way would be to use Martian record. Uh, so this is important because it can be a replacement for concrete compounds. Mars regolith is mostly silicon dioxide and ferric oxide with a fair amount of aluminum, calcium oxide, and sulfur oxide. Uh, the composition varies from place to place uh, because of the variability in asteroid collisions and the weathering by wind and water. Uh, so uh, a researcher in the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences, they tried a sulfur to sand mix of uh, a ratio one is to one and compares the mixture to break down grains and drive out air bubbles. So the resulting concrete has had twice as strong as standard concrete. Uh, Sulfur-based concrete also hardens quickly and so it takes limited time to cool down, which would help in 3D printing as well. Um, manufacturing polymers using carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and hydrogen from water in the soil, and using this as a binder for regolith could also be another approach to reduce the risk of radiation and protect the astronauts in the habitat. Uh, so next is contamination, and uh, this can be both forwards and backwards. So forward contamination is when we go to the surface of Mars and take some uh, biomolecules with us or certain bacteria with us. And backwards would be when we get something from Mars into our habitat. And this can be life-threatening. Uh, so we must um, reduce it and reduce it to uh, almost none. So uh, the current methods would be destabilizing and dust removal in the airlock system. Um, there is the regular checkup in the facilities for any biological contamination. 
And there is an interesting method called the laser-induced fluorescence machine. If the laser pointers reveal a fluorescent glow, uh, pocket digital cameras to capture, capture the images and compare the fluorescent signatures with those belonging to known organic or inorganic quality. Uh, the latest smart simulations, they only needed green laser pointers to identify the presence of the tiny bead-like crystals that served as fluorescent tracers. Uh, this detects both forwards and backwards contamination. Uh, now, an in, uh, now, an interesting research topic would be as extremophiles. So, as the name suggests, these microorganisms can survive in extreme climates and temperatures. Um, the first organism uh, in the first picture can survive a 15,000 gray dose of radiation. In comparison, 10 grays would kill a human. This organism has also been exemplary in many ways. It has survived in cold, dehydration, vacuum, and acid. On the right, we have the tardigrades that have survived in space vacuum. So these microorganisms have certain enzymes that help them achieve this, uh, these skills. And so we hope to research on them and find out what's, what exactly it is and find out a way to utilize it to create a radiation shield that would also not contaminate. Uh, next research topic would be the human body. So we will be studying the effects of radiation and artificial environment on human body. Uh, we need to see how males and females differ with their responses. And uh, throughout the history of space exploration, there has been very little data on female astronauts. So we hope to increase this amount of data and get more on the female astronauts uh, and the female crewmates. There will be daily check to ensure that there isn't any threat to any human body in the crew. Uh, so the second floor will be the agriculture and the space hotel. It will contain the greenhouse, the kitchen, and the space hospital. Uh, so the greenhouse will mainly use uh, aeroponics, hydroponics, and geoponics to grow the crops. There will be a vertical garden, and there will be robots and machine learning to ensure that these gardens have, are well taken care of. There would be crops such as beets, soy, tomatoes, lettuce, onion, mushrooms, semolina, spinach, olives, and dwarf wheat to ensure that there we can cook a variety of uh, dishes and that the astronauts have a variety to choose from. So that also contributes to their psychological well-being. Uh, we must ensure the healthy growth of the crops and there will be the checking of the effects of different fruits on the astronauts' physical and psychological health. We will also have lab-based meat, which can be 3D printed to create certain dishes. Uh, so the resources needed for five days with meal examples. Uh, so the menus that have been to space have been between 1,900 and 3,200 calories per day, depending on the astronaut's weight, their gender, and their specific needs. Uh, so taking an average of 2,550 calories per day, the calorie consumption for five days for an astronaut would be 12,750 calories. Uh, during the Gemini and Apollo missions, astronauts were supplied with uh, 0.58 kgs of food per day. Uh, so the amount of food required for five days would be 2.9 kilograms. And with an average of three liter water, the amount of water required for five days would be 15 liter. Uh, so on the right, you can see the Gemini standard menu. And it has dishes from pancakes to orange drink to butterscotch pudding and ham and potatoes. So this just shows that we need a variety of dishes to keep the crewmates satisfied. Um, this is an example of what the menu uh, in the health facility can look like. So we can we will have a meal plan which will be different for in every individual because every individual has different needs and they can also have few free days so where they can get burgers and feed them to pizzas and such things and all the um, all the all the agricultural crops used in this will be grown in the habitat. 
so the kitchen has to be portable and it also has to be efficient. It will be managed by robots who will refer to dietary charts formulated by the medical officer and ensure the provision of nutritional food at the specified time. Um, the major components would be the foldable components of the kitchen, constant illumination. Uh, it revolves 360 degrees, so uh, it is easier and more accessible. There will be a sink, there will be storage, there will be um, a separate component for tables and shelves, and there will also be a waste. Uh, next, we have the space hospital. This will mostly be run by AI. There will be daily monitoring and dietary checkup. Um, everybody has different requirements, so everybody will have its own checkup and own meal plan, own exercise plan. Um, astronauts. Medical allergy that may come up later. Um, we will be trying the best to uh, reduce the risk of severe diseases, uh, and that is why we will have the day one. Uh, so, the psychological uh, well being is also equally important. Uh, there will be exercise and yoga. Uh, the astronauts can practice meditation. Uh, there will be a VR imaging of places on the Earth. So a lot of time astronauts have mentioned that uh, they miss the nature, they miss Earth, so we can use virtual reality to uh, help them experience that again on board the habitat. Uh, they can also have games where they select their own surroundings. So it could be anything from their homes to their cities or certain nature play, uh, nature uh, location. So that would help keep their mind. Uh, the third floor would be the habitation and the recreation. So this floor would have the sleeping pots, the recreational rooms, and the personal spaces. Uh, now, one of the important factors in this habitat is that we will be using uh, foldable furniture so that we can utilize this space to its maximum. Um, as you can see in the first picture, uh, the furniture can be folded and it becomes a single unit. And so you can store that. And when you need it, you can again remove it and uh, open the furniture. Um, on the right, you can see the sleep pod. So this sleep pod would be important because sleep is very important for astronauts. So this will have a uh, comfortable mattress that, that the astronauts can adjust to, uh, what, to what they like. It will have monitors to constantly uh, sense their, uh, their heartbeat, their their oxidation levels and such. And it will have an atmosphere like that. To help make them sleep better. Uh, so the machines and technologies necessary for the operation of the installation. Uh, we will have smart variables. There will be a biomonitor that will be continuously monitoring the heart rate, uh, breathing, blood pressure, temperature, physical activity, and blood oxygen levels. Uh, there will be a wristband which will have all the medical history of the astronaut, and it will also have all the history of their daily monitoring. So they, when they when they remove the wristband and give it uh, to the crewmate for analysis, it becomes very easy. Uh, it tracks their workout behaviors. Uh, there will be augmented reality induced robotic surgeries and robotic helpers with, with super steady hands. Uh, there will be miniaturized devices to perform um, minimally invasive surgeries. And these robots and devices can be controlled by the doctor on board. Uh, there will be smart medical systems that can diagnose and perhaps treat illnesses, and there will be telemedicine capabilities that will allow the chief medical officer to consult with the experts back on Earth. Um, there will be detailed assessment using technologies. The uh, artificial intelligence will help make decision-making techniques more accurate and faster. Uh, we will be using learning app algorithms to become more precise and accurate. So they, they interact with training data and they allow us to get insight into the smallest of details and get faster diagnostics. 
Um, so analytics can drill down to the pixel level on an extremely large digital image. And so we can see what, what uh, the human eye wouldn't, wouldn't be able to see. Uh, we can also diagnose severe disease, diseases in the early stages and provide a faster and efficient approach to using uh, machine learning algorithms. Uh, artificial intelligence can also improve productivity by identifying features of interest in flight before a human clinician, uh, clinician uh, reviews the data. So uh, one of the interesting uh, elements that I came across was boron. And boron nanotubes are going to be so, so important in space exploration. Uh, they have many of the excellent properties of the well-known carbon nanotubes because they share the same structure, but they have high chemical stability, they have higher resistance to oxidation at high temperatures. Uh, they are a stable white band gap semiconductor. Uh, the isotopically enriched boron nanotubes, uh, which, which, which contain boron 10, uh, further, they yield, they have a high yield and we can, we can make them in large quantities using a ball miling process. So these help reduce the nitrogen temperature leading to the growth of thin cylindrical fields. Uh, these can help in radiation shielding. They can help in multifunctional materials for energy, energy storage, um, in sensing and shell of the future of spaceship, uh, in nuclear industry, neuron related medical applications, cancer diagnostics and treatment, and they provide shielding from the high neutron fluxes produced by the fusion process. So, so many uses. And we can uh, continue research on them and uh, try to synthesize them in the labs to, be, to, to take a better step towards sustainability. So the other technologies used would be renewable energy, which is solar and electric, and un uninterrupted power, which would be completely efficient. Uh, there would be a mobile lab so, uh, so that the radiation uh, content would reach the astronauts uh, at a much lesser rate. Uh, so the, because the astronauts won't be going out with just their suits, but, in the, but we will have a lab that goes out. Um, we will have AI and machine learning for analyzing and predictions in healthcare. Uh, laser communication system, 3D printers, LEDs for lighting and plant growth, uh, temperature regulation, air quality management, uh, robots for space hospital and monitoring. We will have uh, medical technology and telemedicine, augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, nanotechnology, like I already talked, for radiation shielding and for future propulsion as well. Um, the laser induced fluorescence emission and NASA's TRISH, so which, is, which is Translational Research Institute for Space Health. So they promote uh, innovations in space healthcare and come up with really, really exciting innovations that could help, uh, help in future space exploration and help settlement on Mars. Uh, possible resources uh, to generate an in-situ uh, using Martian regolith for radiation protection. Uh, we're using iron oxide and silicon oxide in Martian soil to make ions glass. And with the help of water and carbon dioxide, we can also make plastics. Um, there will be water extraction and desalination to make it safer to use and drink. There will be, we will be recycling water uh, so that there's no wastage. Um, the, we will be geni genetically, uh, genetically modifying and growing lettuces to produce associated drugs by recycling the nitrogen and argon that's present in the Martian atmosphere and adding oxygen to it. So this could also help in creating medicine on board the habitat. And we can, we can make medicines whenever we need it because we cannot be storing a lot of medicines as they have an expiration date. Um, now we have the management. Uh, so the crew on board will have a commander. There will be a systems engineer, an astrobiologist, medical officer, biomedical engineer, and a rotating astronaut in training. Uh, so the role of the commander is to lead and supervise the habitat. They are responsible for the exploration activities. Um, an ideal commander would be a planetary protection officer since they possess an advanced degree in science or math, and uh, they have experience in planning, executing, and overseeing 
cross cultural communication because we need to embrace the culture um, flexibility communication uh, the systems engineer will be responsible for overseeing all the engineering business and management aspects of the habitat and all the missions and to make sure that all the parts are functioning well. Uh, their role will be to look at the big picture uh, to look at what exactly the mission aims to do and considering cost, schedules, and social issues uh, um, associated with the project. Their skills include math and computer skills, organization and attention to detail, critical thinking, problem solving, curiosity, and communication. Uh, next, we have the astrobiologist. Uh, they are responsible for discovering how biological systems respond and adapt to space environment uh, for developing integrated psychological models for biology in space. They are responsible for identifying the underlying mechanisms and networks that govern biological processes in the space environment. To study the crops for nutrients and checking their quality every day uh, for developing cutting, cutting edge biological technologies to facilitate space flight research. Um, they are also responsible for developing mechanistic understanding to support human health in space and enabling the transfer of knowledge and technology uh, to the understanding of life on Earth. Uh, now we have the medical officer who are responsible for, over, for the overall physical and mental health of the crew. Uh, they are required to be present in the habitat hospital and work with uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning to monitor the daily records of crewmates and come up with their ideal dietary and fitness plans for the crew. Uh, the medical officer must have a good understanding of topics across biology, physics, and chemistry. Uh, they must also possess an advanced degree in aerospace medicine. So, so their role is to ensure that the crew is doing their best and that they're feeling their best. Uh, the biomedical engineer would be very important and they are responsible for developing the next generation of life support systems to enable humans to live in space for extended periods of time with minimal resupply. Um, they will be checking the atmosphere revitalization and water recovery, waste management, water recycling, um, engineering bi biological systems to provide critical resources for exploration, including food, life support, other materials. Um, they will be responsible to also develop, develop offshore for the bioreactors for biofuel production uh, while treating wastewater, uh, sequestering carbon and providing uh, a platform for aquaculture. They will also be analyzing all the samples collected and checking the chemical composition of the lunar regolith and other samples collected. Uh, the astronaut in training would be a temporary visitor who will observe all the crew members and the working of the habitat. Uh, they must not hold the same job title as the current crew members to ensure we have a diverse skill set. And they can come in, they can present their views and um, present their problems, give uh, criticism, and that would help in betterment of the working of the habitat. Uh, so the astronauts need to be trained for CPR in space, for better meditation techniques. Um, there will be simulated VR training, so that would uh, show them what it would be like when, when they go out for a mission, before the mission actually happens, so they are uh, more prepared. There will be team building and communication, and there will be health care training. Uh, guidelines to be provided to other facilities or the whole station. Uh, so regular health monitoring in every facility. Uh, health related data has to be shared with the health facility so we can look at how the other astronauts are also behaving and compare it to, the, to our crew and see what differences there are. In case you observe symptoms of a disease, isolate immediately to reduce the risk of spreading the disease to your crewmates. Because even the smallest of diseases like cold and cough, which can be cured easily on Earth, uh, 
can be life threatening in space. Um, contact the doctor when you have isolated and they will send you uh, the requirements and send them the necessary data back to be examined. Um, the daily weather reports are also to be shared with all the facilities. So specific protocols of the facility are daily check-in, briefings, health monitoring and data collection, uh, habitat systems check, uh, daily crop quality check, sanitation check, contamination check, and resources quality and quantity check. A protocol for occupancy or entertainment. So there will be recreational rooms and private spaces for all the crew members. They will have karaoke nights, movie nights, board games, um, they, they will have meditation to relieve stress. There will be a lot of socializing and understanding of different cultures. So the crewmates can get to know each other better. They can understand each other's traditions, cultures, and celebrate all the festivals that their fellow crewmates celebrate back on the earth. Uh, there will be virtual reality games with an option to select your surroundings. Um, so again, you can decide what you want. Uh, there will also be writing, sketching, we can also have painting on board to, to keep them engaged and to keep them uh, entertained. Uh, the protocols for food microproduction. Uh, so the processes would be aeroponics, hydroponics, and videoponics. Uh, the vertical gardens will be monitored by robots. There will be daily check for crop quality and crop growth. Uh, there will also be a daily check for contamination and crops. So in case there's any sort of contamination, we can, we can sense it and we can uh, get back to seeing where the problem is. Our protocols for 3D printing will include material check and getting the approval from the engineer. Um, without that, there can be no 3D printing. Uh, we will have different 3D printers for machinery and for food. Um, the use of every printer or and every 3D print must be documented so we know where the resources are going. Um, we will also be trying to combine nanotechnology and 3D printing. Uh, technologies and outputs that could be applied to the earth, uh, improved recycling, using successful artificial intelligence tools to help identify in, uh, infection patterns and identify patients at risk before they show symptoms. Uh, we have enhanced accuracy and pre precision of artificial intelligence analytics, uh, new efficient methods to combat diseases. Uh, there will be a greater acceptance and likelihood of health monitoring through variables. So people will be more comfortable getting their own wristbands and monitoring their health. There will also be faster clinical decision making with the help of artificial intelligence. Um, helping humans, uh, it will also help humans understand their body better and diagnose the diseases. Uh, we can also develop new medicines that will help reduce the intake of antibiotics and in result reduce uh, the chances of developing more superbugs. Uh, it will also encourage healthy practices and make healthcare available to remote locations. Um, space biology's research into the virulence of pathogens in space, loss of bone density, and the changes in the growth of plants can impact development of drugs that promote wound healing or tissue uh, regeneration. Uh, and these can also result in high fertilizers that increase crop yield. So the guidelines that will be applied to the daily life on earth include uh, new methods to create medicines, increase awareness towards the human body. Um, we celebrate diversity and learn to work with what you have. It impacts the sustainable development goals, uh, which will be responsible uh, consumption. There will be sustainable, uh, sustainable goals. There will be uh, climate action, which is the most important because since we're, we were using renewable energy and we are polluting the environment less, um, it can be used on the earth to do the same. Uh, good health and uh, green energy. These are the references. Thank you.